All right, we're on. Uh, good afternoon. This is uh, the Education Ec Economic Development Committee meeting uh, for what's this June now. Uh, uh, the time is now 403, 402, and we're going to get this uh, meeting in order. Um, there's a copy of the agenda for this meeting, and it can be found on the county's website under the tab for the legislature. Uh, at this time, I would ask that everyone here please silence your phones and electronic devices, and please rise uh, for for a moment of reflection and pleasure of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Helen, may we have a phone call, please? Betty Young? Here. Lujan? Present. Lujan? Here. Ramos? Skevich? Sure. Cassie? Stiganga? And Minuta. Here. Five, present, three absent. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So for the first portion of this, I'm going to ask the committee to move a couple of agenda items around, please. Uh, I'd like to move item three uh, to the first position, and we would leave... Uh, Tourism at number two, and then move uh, the commissioner of planning to the third position. Got a motion. So moved. Second for that. Okay. Lujan and Briskevich, yeah. welcome, Mr. Ramos. Okay. Uh, so, first up, we have uh, Mr. Filthy Alvarado, CEO of Orange County Industrial Development Agency, for an IDA update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Uh, I think you all have. Rob, do you have a copy in front of you? I have one more. Yes. So um, yeah, got kind of some of my usual subjects on here, but I'm going to focus on item number two. But uh, just kicking it off uh, with, with number one, our meeting scheduled this Wednesday is our, our, our main public meeting. Uh, we have been holding our finance committee meetings right before our main board of directors meetings on the same Wednesday, the third Wednesday of the month. That uh, pattern stays the same, but again, we're doing finance and board meeting um, on the same time, so the same day. So we're, we're starting on Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. with finance, 5.30 p.m. with our regular board of directors meeting. We have canceled our July board meeting. Uh, we did this last year just given the, um, the agenda and time of year. Uh, uh, vacations and such so we'll have no july meeting after uh wednesday's board meeting our next meeting will be a governance committee meeting on august 1st of course as it says here our meetings are still all our public meetings are held in the community room downstairs on the first floor thanks to several of you who have attended uh but i want you to be mindful of those dates so you don't come when we're not there uh second again this is really my focus today is the update on the monitoring bill that uh, was passed on may 1st with the passage of the new york state budget uh, for 2024, unfortunately, you know uh, what it is. It really did become a political football. I'll put it that way. I, I really think politics has a lot to do with this, but I don't mean to disregard anything else that's raised with it. But again, it did become bill uh, a law. Uh, the bill did on May 1st. Uh, there was language originally written into the proposed bill that opened this up to affecting other IDAs around the state. And there was a lot of pushback on that during the negotiation period, which of course was extended with the the uh, longer gap in the uh, the budget negotiation process, right? Um, so uh, originally it opened up to other IDAs, that was negotiated out. And originally it was gonna be for two years and that was actually turned to three years, which wasn't expected. Uh, the senator who initiated this was floating in his process conference. I didn't even ask for three years and I got two years. Well, I went to a conference uh, for the New York State Economic Development Council, New York State EDC. Um, it's basically a, a, a state trade association for economic developers, IDAs especially. It's been a wonderful resource. I've mentioned it, and I, you know, it's listed down here in the report. Uh, been a resource for me as a relatively new IDA person because I have colleagues there that I can talk about our issues and look for best practice and get creative ideas. Well, the first session at that conference was their legislative update, and they, uh, their executive director of New York State EDC and the lobbyist firm that they hired to work on issues like this spoke. And of course, just like the conference I went to two years ago, when I just became part of the IDA, the first session was about us and it wasn't a good thing. So I'm in the back of the room wanting to have a bag over my head. But you know, in this case, it was the lobbyists talking about the work that they did and kind of taking a victory lap on behalf of the rest of the membership saying, we got this eliminated for you. 
And she frankly was funny. She even bragged and said, we even conceded a third year in order to make sure it didn't affect other ideas. So they're like cheering me, except me, obviously in the back, it's affecting us. But uh, I spoke with uh, this lobbying firm that worked for New York City EDC and some other members that were involved in this process. And, and the part I just wanted to share that came out of it was they were trying to explain to me that eventually when uh, the other IDAs around the state would not be affected by this, at least listed in the, in, in, in the bill itself, then the attitude of other senators from other areas and even the governor's office, as I understand it, was with the backing of a state senator from our area and three assembly people, allegedly, that were that supported it. Um, at least the senator gave credit to Aileen Gunther, Jonathan Jacobson, and Chris Egas. Certainly the last two I know for sure, they debated in favor of the bill. Um, frankly, I've been trying to connect with Aileen uh, Assemblywoman's Gunther's office to try and, you know, because she's someone we spoke ahead of time and, she, you know, I, she's known me a long time. She knows, you know, my integrity. So I was, I was surprised, uh, but I'm trying to confirm whether or not that's the case. Uh, but basically the sentiment was, since you have your own state senator and multiple assembly people behind this, and again, it no longer affects the, the rest of the state, then the attitude was, this is what I was being told by the lobbyists, the attitude that came back even from the governor's office was, Go ahead, if you want to screw up your own county, go ahead and do it as long as it doesn't affect others. It's exactly the way she put it to me. And, and that's how I look at it. Is this is something that's hampering our efforts. Uh, it's gonna uh, create a perception that certainly could keep applicants from not only the IDA, but from Orange County. Uh, but the good news is the last piece that was kind of watered down to our benefit is the Senator want, wanted this uh, monitor be appointed by the Authorities Budget Office. The Authorities Budget Office, better known as the ABO, uh, does not really have a, a um, does not isn't very supportive of, of economic development as as it currently stands. Uh, actually, the Orange County Partnership successfully beat them in a lawsuit a few years ago. You may recall. So their director essentially interprets uh, economic development and tax incentives the same way the senator does. So if the ABO were appointing this monitor, there's a good chance that the intention would be to effectively put us out of business for for three years. Well, that was negotiated out and actually the monitor will be appointed by the inspector general's office for New York State. Uh, so the IG is the independent watchdog for the state. Uh, they are appointed by the executive branch, but they even oversee the executives if there is a, you know, a challenge there. So they reached out to us shortly after this became law and invited uh, myself and our counsel to go to New York City and meet with their chief of staff and their legal counsel. And we did that. And it was a tremendous meeting and it's really changed my opinion of this. They're trying to be, I think, exactly what they're tasked with. They want to be objective. They want to make sure that this is uh, this measure, this bill is executed properly, that it's everything it should be. It's nothing that it shouldn't be. I left there feeling they asked for a lot of feedback. How do we operate? Uh, you know, uh, how would this impact us? Uh, what are ways we could work this out? Because this is all new to them. But, but we left there very encouraged that this ultimately, the appointment will have to happen by August 1st or shortly thereafter, as is written in the, in the, the language of the bill. Uh, but I'm really expecting this is gonna be making sure that we're doing everything properly by the letter of the law, sound deals that are backed by cost benefit analyses and uh, being completely transparent through the process, which is exactly what we're aiming to do. And I think we're doing a great job. This will just be further transparency. And frankly, I think in the end, it will be further validation. Of that we're doing everything properly. The only downside is, uh, the only disagreement we have with the IG is whether or not we have to pay for just relevant expenses like travel or we have to pay for a salary. Uh, the way we read it, we, we would only be the former, not the latter, And uh, but the IG thinks that we probably have to pay for it all. So no matter what it is, how impactful it is, how damaging it is, we have to pay for it. That's that's one certain you know downside that comes out of our, our own funds that we would otherwise use for site development or or other economic development types of efforts. So that's the latest and greatest. Again, the appointment will actually happen on August 1st or before there or shortly afterward. We'll know more once we know when we speak with the, the, uh, the monitor themselves and we kind of get a sense of their profile and what their objectives are. Uh, no matter who it is, and I made this clear, we're gonna work very well with them. We're gonna be polite. We're gonna be completely transparent. If they wanna see any documents, they're gonna see them right away. There'll be no hesitation. Uh, but hopefully it's something where again, it's, it doesn't turn into a, a, a political maneuver, but really something that's uh, Will help validate that we're doing things the right way. So I'm going to pause on there. If anyone has questions on that issue, since it's been, you know, such a contentious issue. Thank you. There's legislators here. I'm assuming that Senator Scrupus or any other one that they wouldn't have any kind of notes or uh, they, they, Yeah, it's a great question. The IG IG did make it clear that they spoke with the senator and with other electeds. I think that were kind of involved in this. So I mean, they had their opportunity to to provide any color that they want. 
I will say my my intention, my number one objective when I went down to, to meet with them in the city was to make it clear who we are, who I am, who the board of directors are, and separate them from the criminals that were here before, because certainly the senators and uh, the senator and others that were pushing this conflated that in their work in Albany, trying to get others on board, say, hey, they've been out of control for a long time. Look what happened. Look, look at these articles acting as though this is the same administration, whereas we're the folks that came in, cleaned this up, were chosen based upon our, our past, our experience, our integrity to do this. So I want to make sure they knew that. They stopped me midway and said, we know. We've read everything. We know exactly what's going on here. Um, and again, uh, they intend to execute this uh, to the, the very letter of the law, but not make it be something larger than that. So I think he and other electeds have an opportunity to, to say that, but these folks, I think, are they're in the business of dealing with facts and paring everything down to what the real facts are. So they're not interested in, in political drama or um, you know any other storytelling uh, that they can't corroborate with facts. So I'm encouraged because of that. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's let her Do the inspector general there? No, uh, she was not in the office. This was her chief of staff and, and the legal counsel. So. And it didn't appear as though we we're going to be communicating directly with the IG. And she's appointed by the governor. Correct. Okay. Yep. Wanted that on the record. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so just a few other uh, quick updates. Uh, we did as as we do twice a year. We completed our Paris reporting. Um, and uh, I say early this month, we had to submit it by the end, of, I think it was April, but we do the ABO receives our Paris reports. I mentioned them earlier. And this is why they would have loved for this monitor bill to, to empower them. They don't have any teeth to actually follow up. If they don't like something in a report, they refer to the state comptroller's office. So just like our Paris reporting, and there were no red flags, I don't mean to suggest, but they have questions saying, question number 16, this, this, and this, blah, blah, blah please explain that. So we, we go through a couple of rounds of that. It was it'd be done in my time here with the state comptroller's office, always very positively. And uh, that was concluded. They have all their questions, so that reporting is complete. Want to make sure you knew that. Again, I attended the, the conference uh, for New York State EDC in, in at the end of May, and some I won't get into it here, but if anyone wants to talk about it more, in addition to the monitoring law, we talked about housing site readiness and other uh, you know, critical um, issues and priorities for economic developers in the state right now. And lastly, we, we put out our community survey where we're looking for the public's uh, input on the future of economic development in Orange County. What do you want to see more of? What do you want to see less of? Uh, getting more specific than that. We edited the survey because it was a little long and there's some ways where you had to make multiple choices and now we have a new grid that makes it easier. Uh, we still want more responses. We really want to get as many as we can. So I have the link here. If there's anything the county can do to help support us with that, uh, and certainly if just members of, of the, the committee and the legislature want to take the survey, we'd really appreciate that. You can simply just go to our, our homepage at ocnyida.com and there's an orange button in the top right for the survey. So just still trying to get some more responses. And lastly, as I always do, I've got a little summary of the projects in, of this administration, again, going back to um, basically April of 2021, uh, projects that we've approved, some of which we've closed, meaning uh, the deal is done. Uh, they've, they've, uh, they're accepting the incentives, they're paying the fees and everything. In some cases, they receive incentives and in projects either don't continue or you know, they don't execute this. So <laughs> we have uh, the top four you see have been approved and closed. We've also approved projects that have not yet closed due to various reasons, Sativa, Walgreens, Milmar, and uh, Scanella Amazon was just approved in our last meeting. And then we have a few applications that are new. Um, Glen Arden, uh, this is something I think is, is of interest to, to many people here. Um, they have not been, the, the current owners have not been paying their pilot payments to the schools, to the town, to the village for a number of years now. Uh, we were notified early this year. We've been kind of all over this issue and working with, with those partners, uh, those other taxing jurisdictions, as well as our attorneys. Well, there is an entity that is going to be purchasing the facility up there and assuming all the debt. Um, there, it, it's a uh, Bethel community is an, an example of, of uh, a, a site that they're, they're, they operate now. Of course, there are different names for their sites. The Nolan Goshens would be the, the legal entity of this this. Uh, group that would be purchasing uh, and again assuming debt and our role in this was essentially just reworking 20 million dollars in bonds that were issued through the IDA years ago um, and we can't do anything unless we have there is a it's contingent in our agreements unless there's approval of, of the village the town and the school district and I've been in contact with them the Nola garden uh, the Noel Noel gardens at Goshen the Nola Goshen's 
Uh, the Knowles and Goshen, thank you. Uh, they had come to agreement with each of those. I actually just spoke with the mayor of, of Goshen a little while earlier, and they, they have come to terms. They expect those agreements to be executed by the end of this month. So it's besides any of the kind of mechanics behind the scene, the important thing is that someone will be assuming uh, the facility, the operations, again, the debt at Glen Arden, and the, uh, it avoids a catastrophe, which is basically that folding. And we have seniors that are displaced and uh, really an, an, an even greater mess financially and otherwise beyond that. So that's positive. And we also have a, just received an application for a hotel in the town of Wallfield, just seeking sales tax exemption and mortgage reporting uh, tax exemption, uh, creating 20 jobs in the town of Wallfield and phase two for Royal Line. Uh, this is basically this is how we had structured it and advised the applicant to apply to us. The first incentives that we issued were for the shell of the building itself, uh, really for this joint venture between Royal Line and GFI, who are the developers that own the property and are building building it. So uh, the pilot and the sales tax exemption and mortgage reporting tax that's for phase one, building kind of the envelope, the shell of the building, and phase two is for just from Royal Line themselves. They're the applicant. For the build out of the interior manufacturing so then that's just for sales tax exemption so they've come to us for phase two again as we uh kind of planned with that so that's in front of us now um that's really it for my formal report but certainly here to answer any of the questions about the idea thank you legislator o'donnell going on uh, going to the yes okay so and just check on that. Yes, because they should have been paid regardless of a pilot or anything. So, but I, I will I definitely will. I'm sorry. What's the name? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. My pleasure. Legislator Pagione. <clears throat> thank you, Chairman Bill. Thank you once again for your uh, information. Thanks. Uh, back to item number three. The IDA successfully completed our 2023 tariff reporting. Uh, since you uh, ascended to the leadership role in the IDA, these reports are made how often in a year? Twice a year. And the current board and your leadership, you have met those deadlines every single time? Absolutely. And answered all the questions that have been presented? 100%. Actually, if I could further answer, uh, the New York State Comptroller, uh, Tom DiNapoli, puts out a, a report every year on IDAs, and one came out earlier this year, and it did cite uh, a number of IDAs that didn't need a report on time, didn't do so adequately, whatever the case may be. We were cited for nothing. We have, have not been since this administration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Anyone else? Hearing none, I just wanted to reiterate and also question. So the survey that you're doing is for what the type of business you'd like to see in your yes, exact types of jobs types of industries um well, what kinds of investment investments should be made in different areas of the county uh it's pretty comprehensive but it really is maybe even for the layperson is to very simply reply and say this is really what i think we need more of what we need less of and continue you know so and so is this yeah. information restricted to the IDA or is that going to be shared with other partners in the community um we're going to share it for sure we're, I'm going to bring the results here no question about it and it's going to help uh shape the future policy of the IDA and directions of the IDA but it certainly is intended to be shared thank you so for the public that's out there it's oc.nyida.com survey uh, ocnyida.com that's Orange County New York IDA um, and go to our homepage there, and on the top right corner there is a uh, an orange button for community survey. Really, take you five minutes to fill it out. We really would appreciate to get it. So I get a lot of that, and for all yes. of us, all of our constituents, this is a really great opportunity to have one cohesive survey. So a lot of people don't think they have a voice, and we're trying to give them that opportunity, at least you know through this method. So thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, again, yes, sir. What's <laughs> again? So. Uh, when this moniker gets named right, and reports to do, I would like this committee to uh, invite that person or she to appear before us and bring us up to speed on their economic development background, seeing as they actually have a veto over every single project and our responsibility over the IDA in naming every person that goes on the board there and having them come in every month, we certainly should get to meet this new monitor and find out their mindset, his or her mindset, when it comes to experience in Orange County and experience in economic development. So I'd like to 
make a motion and we send it in. I'll second. Okay, motion uh, made and seconded. Uh, roll call. Ben Young? Sure. Yes. Luana? Aye. O'Donnell? Yes. Ramos? Yes. Miscavige? Yes. Many. Yes. Very Excellent. Good. Look forward to it. Absolutely. Look forward to that. Thank you. Yeah, on, on that note, you know, if, if I'm just going to put it out there. We've done our job as legislature, okay? You've done your job that we've pointed you to, as well as anyone who has been on that board. So now's a really good time to for the road to hit the road, and they need to be as accountable as we are. And so it's a back check for them as well. So I'm glad we just passed this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Excellent. Next up, uh, we have Amanda Dana, Tourism Director for a quarterly update. Welcome. Thank you. I am going to bring a chair just so please will have the presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So, um, happy to be here. Happy summer, everyone. I'm seeing you guys in a few months. Um, we um, we are delighted to let you know that um, our travel guides are in the printer. We'll discuss that a little bit later in the report, but we put we put uh, an interim travel guide in front of you because uh, our travel guides are in the uh, printer right now, but we wanted to make sure you had a copy of that. Um, and uh, just basically, this is going to be a quicker report than normally. Um, and no. yes, oh, this is. Do you want it? Okay, I can slow it down right now. Um, and um, we just want to give you some highlights, basically, um, and just to touch on some things. Um, but um, just to talk a little bit about things that are, you know, real substantial to us. Occupancy tax for the first quarter is up 11% which is a great sign of our economy, despite the fact that folks have been saying and everyone else is saying we're going into recession or have been in a recession, uh, our office and tax remains strong. Um, our, our sales uh, tax is also uh, trending higher than last year, 4.1% for the first quarter. Um, and that's not normal in the entire region. I was looking at some of my partners and some of them are down, some of them up, some of them are exactly the same as last year. So that's a good sign for Orange County. Um, just to talk a little bit about staffing in our, in our, our office, um, we have uh, an intern that started, Faith Wilson. She started on a, uh, just this month, she's going to be doing some social media and helping out with both film and uh, tourism. And also a welcome wagon started. I think you guys might remember the welcome wagon, which is our working with the office for the aging. And um, some of our seniors are going to be doing some activities. Um, at the farmer's market, at grand openings, uh, working with Legoland, working with Stewart, working with Woodbury Common. Uh, they'll basically be welcoming projects and welcoming people to our county. So we're happy that that launched. Um, thirdly, uh, we have our civil service exam for a tourism assistant to come out. The list did finally come out so, from last November. So we're hoping to um, look into hiring one more tourism assistant in the office, and that'll bring us up to six. So we want to just talk about a little bit what to expect here, uh, and that's gone. <laughs> but the summer is in full swing, as you can see. Uh, Lisa, it of course, did that, um, talking about the swinging door. But um, summer is here. We all of our marketing initiatives now are, are all surrounded around summer, summer activities and whatnot. Um, we uh, want to just mention a few things. Legoland did open up their water playground. Uh, that was a Memorial Day. Um, doing very well. Let's hope for the warm weather. And uh, as you can probably imagine, very weather uh, effect, affected by weather, but it's been very <laughs> good for them. Um, people in general uh, it, are planning more, which is a great thing. When we go and listen to different educational series and tourism, people are planning their vacations more and more of a window too. So that means that people aren't as afraid to travel anymore. So they're planning more than six months in advance. So that's a great sign for us. But also the good sign for us is the fact that New York City tourism is definitely coming back. And um, as you know, through COVID, that was the most hit area probably in the country. Um, it is now still, it's back to the number one uh, international and domestic destination. And that means good things for us because when that tourism builds, more people come into Orange County. And so that's a great thing for us. 
Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, sports tourism. Um, it is a very strong sector in our market. Uh, brings thousands of athletes and families here. Um, some of the top three, uh, which are um, 12 Rock, Fuller Fields, and Blue Sky Sports Complex, um, they um, they see thousands of, of families here, and families spend a tremendous amount of money in our in our uh, communities. Has anyone uh, tried to go into a restaurant in Middletown last weekend? It was very difficult. Um, the New York State Track and Field um, Championship um, was there. 1,800 athletes participated, um, but probably over set between seven and 8,000 people were here yeah. all over the county. And um, there really wasn't a hotel room to be had in the county. They pushed up to uh, Pennsylvania, they pushed over to Fishkill, but it was a lot, um, a lot of folks here. So the main emphasis is that the sports terrorism trend is not going away and it's one of our strong sectors. Um, just talk a little bit about Stewart. Um, we are we continue to work with them. Uh, Atlantic Airways is starting this <laughs> from August to October, and that's the Faroe Islands, and that'll be starting then. Um, and we still continue to work with the marketing team for play. And Allegiant is still at um, Stewart. Um, Frontier is no no longer running out of Stewart. Um, but I just want to talk through that. Um, our municipal tourism grants. Um, it's a it was a very popular program. Uh, 22 municipalities would receive grants, and um, we've used all of our funds on that. So that's a good thing, because that means that these municipalities are using these funds towards their events, and um, and all the events have happened. So it was a great thing to say. Um, at this time, I'm going to have Rachel talk a little bit about some of the marketing updates. And so here we go. Uh, so just to go quickly through them, we are rebranding. We've chosen Madden Media, and the uh, contract is being processed, and we will launch that in early uh, spring 2024. Um, our Google AdWords and digital display is still running. This is the first year that we've had it start from the very beginning of the year until the end of the year. Our YouTube ads are going. That started in um, April and will run until November. Uh, we just recently did two travel trade shows. So Amanda went to San Antonio uh, last month, and she and I both went to the NYSEA um, annual conference. And so the IPW is to promote uh, international travel. So we're getting more involved in that market. And uh, the conference was just to stay up to date on everything going on in tourism in New York State. Um, very excited. We just finished our second commercial series that was on ABC and CBS uh, from the end of April until the end of May. Um, we will be doing another commercial in um, late August. And um, Lisa, would you mind? So just if you guys want to take a look at this, uh, we did have some visuals in the report, but this is for our streaming services. Uh, we started this June 1st, and these results were pulled June 13th. So in less than two weeks, we had over 226,000 views. Uh, this is streaming services. We're using Odyssey as our platform. Um, but we have found that a lot of people are not using cable as much. So this is uh, our way of reaching people in um, another way that they consume content. Um, and you can see our top channels, A&E, uh, Lifetime. Um, so we're really, really excited about that. And we have that many views within, within two weeks. And this will be running until the end of October. So uh, you guys might see us on Hulu or 3 TV. Even, um, even Reuters. I was shocked yeah, that that was yeah, one of yeah, the top ones. It's, it's yeah, a, it's a mix. Those are the top ones. We yeah. had a, a ton on there. Um, and then uh, uh, we're going to switch over into social media. Um, I'll, I'll first just talk about uh, Facebook. We're running a campaign right now. Follow us campaign that started in April. We have over 1.1 million views to date, and that's going to be going until October. Uh, for Instagram, we've surpassed 6,000 followers, and we're still focusing on Reels. So the next slide, Lisa is going to show us. Hopefully, it's not too loud. Um, but one of our Reels that we just recently did. Lord, I thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a beautiful day, yeah, 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 yeah. 
So uh, that we collected that content and we created it all internally. Um, trails are really big for us. It's a great attraction of ours. We want to um, make more people aware of it. And then we also want to bring people off of the trails and into our restaurants, into our other attractions. So we are going to be doing more reels uh, similar to this. We are also at the end of this month going to do our Middletown Authentic Cuisine Tour following up from Newburgh. Um, so we're excited. They have a lot of food there. Um, and also with the Rev 250 coming up, uh, we are going to be doing a history itinerary. So we're taking these itineraries that we have on the website and then converting them into reels. Um, and then talking about filming, that's all internal filming, but later in July, we will be working with a production company and bolstering our family fun library. Um, so that that will be part of our uh, fall commercial. And, and that about sums it up. Our strategic partnerships are still, um, still moving forward. Yeah, um, so our strategic partnerships, just to talk a little more about that right now, we our strongest uh, Legoland, New York, um, the, on the private side, Legoland, New York Stewart International, Woodbury Common, uh, we do work with Coach as well, uh, and Nystea. So all these uh, entities we work strongly with, mostly for marketing, collaborations, and distribution. In the case of Nystea, which is New York State uh, Tourism Association, they we worked an agreement with them, so they're going to additional trade shows with our collateral to promote Orange County. So it's really been working out with them, and uh, we look forward to more collaborations. I didn't put on here, I Love New York. We work consistently and constantly with I Love New York. They have a tremendous following. We do work with them quite a bit. Um, so right now, I'm going to have Lisa talk through this next uh, this next slide and talk about some of our website enhancements. But before I do that, just one stat you should I should know is that from web traffic from 2022 to 2023, we're up 77 percent. So which is a great thing. So our marketing initiatives are really driving that traffic back to our website, and we're really proud of that. Okay, go, Lisa. Sorry. <laughs> So in this next slide, you could see our new events module. Um, we launched it maybe a month ago. And as you can see here, this is a screen grab of me just searching for Juneteenth events. So I type in the word June and it actually populates all the events that we have categorized as Juneteenth events. And if you hover over it, it expands it. And once you find the event that you are interested in learning more about, you can click it and it brings up the screen and shows you more information about the event and you can add it to your calendar. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, they also share other upcoming events. So if you are a visitor and you're coming for a specific date, you can see all the events happening in, on those days. Um, so it's really user friendly for anyone using our website. We are also going to be launching a places module, which is basically all the places in Orange County that we currently have on our website. Similar function, people can search for specific places or, you know, and add them to their calendar and print out their own itinerary. So really our focus is to just make it more user friendly for anyone utilizing our website. That's it. And the brainchild of that is right here and, and here. Um, and they said, we need to have a little bit more of a better user experience on our website. And um, this is what happened. So it's, it was really thank you, you too for that initiative. Um, so print media, um, we, we our travel guides are, are in front of you. This is our, our travel guides, not 100% complete because our travel guides are actually in the printer. You're probably wondering how I got these to you, but uh, but these are just examples of our travel guides. It will be that um, quite different this year. Um, I think as you might have remembered, um, there's no pullout map. Um, it's in, in, in embedded in the uh, in the guide. Uh, we have a scratch and sniff centerfold, um, and um, we, we we call that uh, candidly our COVID tester too. Because if you can't smell the maple syrup, something's wrong. No, oh, <laughs> oh, you did it. Oh, you did it. so I didn't. We I smell print. Okay. <laughs> the reason why I was just gonna say I want to see how many would pick it up and smell it. Um, these copies do not have a scratch and sniff, but you did it. <laughs> so. It's good. So uh, these are going to be with, with us in a few weeks. So uh, they'll, they'll have the scratch and sniff versions. I'll make sure we get you guys all the copies you need. Um, so, but thank you. We're pretty excited about that. And there's a maiden theme now. So the maiden Orange County theme is, is present throughout the guide. So we're super proud of that. 
So public relations, uh, we're still continuing to do our press releases twice a month. Uh, we, as I mentioned before, we work with our partners such as I Love New York. Um, one thing I wanna bring to your attention is, is something that goes for a full cycle. So when we have tourism um, writers in, historical writers in, and we give them an itinerary, we take them around the county, we hope that they go back and do something with that. So in this particular instance in your report is um, Global Tourism, Sports and Entertainment. Um, it's a tour operator. They came in last year, we took them out through the collaborations of I Love New York, and we showed them some great activities. What they did is they turned it around, this happened to be an Italian writer. Uh, they did a lot of social on this, but also they turned it around and made it into a bookable, sellable itinerary for the Hudson Valley. And in that is three locations, two or three locations of Orange County that people can buy through their travel agents. So this is something that came through full circle. It came from a tour into packaging, and now it's being sold on, on the retail market. So uh, we gave you an example of what that looked like. So more to come on that, but that's just an example of why it's important to have these ham tours and, and give the experience to these writers and uh, these tour operators. As I mentioned, I Love New York has a, a lot of blog mentions uh, for a lot of our properties. The Haunted History Trail, um, Rachel, you were very much involved in that. Uh, social influencer Brian Cano, and you got to know each other very well. We highlighted two, um, two places in Orange County, one was Silvio's and Warwick, and the other is the UFO Museum. So um, <laughs> that was super fun. And that was just last month, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So last month we already had two thousand requests for guides from that. So it's it's really um, it's really panning out, and it really did work. So um, just want to talk a little bit about data analytics. So next slide here. So um, one of the things we look at is you know when we when we collect bed tax and from our hotel motel properties is also uh, our contract with Air uh, Air DN not Air DN Airbnb and DRBO. Um, this particular um, analytical tool that we have shows a little bit more deep, dives deeper into like where these, um, the most of these Airbnbs are. As you can see from that, I'm not sure you can see from the slide, but Newberg takes the lion's share of, of, of these uh, Airbnb units, they call them units, um, and all the way down you can see there. So if you see Goshen has 55 units, they call it units. So, um, but this is just a feel for what that looks like. And this is a great revenue source for our county. But we, we do look at this and see where most of the units are, and uh, we look and see where. So houses are the top one. So houses, full house uh, rentals are the top in our county. So just to give you a feel for that research. Okay. Um, also want to talk a little bit about, do we do Storm Center or no? Okay. Uh, no, they okay. have a handout for it. Okay. Um, we have another tool we're using. We're looking at a case study of Storm King Arts Center um, and the Storm King Arts Center, we wanted to see where people are coming from and um, just give a little feel also back to them. It's good for our partners, but also see where they're coming from so we can eventually tweak our marketing to see if we can hit another marketing area to bring them to Orange County. So we did a, we did a quick um, uh, report on that to see where they were coming from internationally or domestic or in-state, out-of-state. So we have um, some information on that just to give you an example. Um, some recently passed events, UFO uh, festival, Pride Month events, Memorial Day parades, and the Storm King Art Center um, groundbreaking, um, which the governor did attend. Uh, They're going to be starting to uh, work on their expansion at, at Storm King Art Center, which if anyone's not been there, you really should go there. It's fantastic. Um, looking forward to events coming up. And this weekend, you guessed it, the New York Air Show, it's going to be here. The Blue Angels will be flying all around Orange County in the Hudson Valley. And um, Orange County is the, the host of that. We're super excited to have them again. Uh, the Blues haven't been here for a couple of years. I don't think they've been here since pre-COVID, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but we're so, super excited for that. Um, the Great American Weekend in uh, Goshen is July 1st and 2nd. And Freedom Fest is July 21st at uh, Thomas Bowen Memorial Park. And that's a fireworks display. Um, and that's it for tourism. Um, see, I told you guys I was going to be quick. Not done yet. So, um, film. Well, we are busy with film. Um, we have uh, Pretty Little Liars and HBO uh, here all the time. But we're also not only using private locations, we're using um, uh, Orange County locations that we the county owns. Um, as you can see from that picture there, the top left, that's the top of the DMV building in Newburgh. 
Um, uh, where's ice cream in Washingtonville? Uh, we turned into that was it the Millwood? Uh, Millwood Creamery. Millwood Creamery. Millwood Creamery, and that was for Pretty Little Liars as well. That's a popular spot. I think the Irishman was there. Now they were there. I think there's probably more films. I just and I go there. I have to be locked and then out you, that day. And you go. Oh, you were there and you couldn't get in. You were mad. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, not not sorry, uh, but I am. Um, so and uh, there was a house in Sarah Wells Trail um, that was um, uh, seen for Pretty Little Liars for about three days. So that was great. They actually used our county parking lot for that. Um, there's a movie coming in now. Uh, it's called There She Goes. Um, um, that actress, um, Leah, is it Leah, uh, Rachel Leah Cook? Cook? She was in She's All That. That was a big movie uh, in, the, in the late 90s. And uh, now it's Mar Vista is the production company. They're here and uh, they're going to be starting their pre-production July 4th. But that's through Mar Vista. And has anyone seen White House Plumbers yet? Yeah, it's very good. I, I do enjoy it. Yeah, so that that finally did start streaming and uh, it's here. I've been watching a few of those episodes and another um, another movie, A Killer Romance, which was filmed in Orange County. Um, so that's also streaming as well. So the Tribeca Film Fest, uh, the North American film premiere of uh, the adults, uh, which filmed uh, in Orange, Ulster and Dutchess County. Um, that Nora went down to that last week and uh, she was talking with the crew and some actors and as you can see on the right someone said yes I'll take a t-shirt and I will wear that proudly so we took a picture of that but <clears throat> it really was good to see that that film premiere um, and they had a lot of locations around Orange County and just to talk a little bit about what's going on with our sound stages. Um, so this is, is the inside of the Bed Bath & Beyond at the Newburgh Mall. So when we couldn't find a sound stage, and we did have a sound stage, and the deal fell through, and we were frantic looking for our sound stage, we actually, with Nora's assistant, got this certified through the state. And this is a certified sound stage production facility. That's and awesome. this is a great adaptive reuse of, of something that was just vacant um, and Purdue Little Liars is in there. That's the inside of the store, as you can see. And just to give you an update on Anthony's Pier 9, a stage six, seven, eight, five, six, seven. Come on, Nora, what is it? Five, five, six, and seven. So umber stages, stage five, six, and seven will be at Anthony's Pier 9. That should be end of September. End of September. Excellent. So um, those are three more stages. And so we're real happy about that because the more stages we have, uh, the more production we get. Um, I think that might conclude. Uh, that concludes the presentation. All right. I'm waiting very patiently in the background. It's uh, <laughs> legislative to it. Thanks, Cameron. I'm just curious with, uh, I know you're uh, targeting the whole DMA with ABC and CBS, and I'm just wondering how you're geographically targeting this uh, live streaming now. That's a good question. Um, I would have to talk with Odyssey. So Odyssey is the company that helped us get the, the top. Um, we give them our demo, what we're looking for. Yep. And they give us the top channels that, that are demo. So you're doing it through Odyssey, Odyssey. and that's nothing mm -hmm. to do with Odyssey. Well, they commandeered the meeting. Yep. And then we, we chose Odyssey, and they helped us guide us with based on the uh, demographics of what we're looking for. And the, that's the thing, like you get in New York EMA, so I'm just wondering, are you doing uh, other cities? Because I know with the streaming, you can do it anywhere in the country. Right. And it's not limited by that. It's limited by the number of uh, how many have that, like thousands and thousands. Of right. And, it's a lot. Right. And I, I, maybe I'll explain myself. We do a circumference around New York City. So it's not just New York City, yeah, but we yeah, go with the most dense populations that are coming here. Are you doing like Philly? Like I know sometimes you We have Philly. done Philly. We've done Boston. But it's streaming? Like, I don't no. think so. I think we're just focusing initially uh, on the New York DMA. New York okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions? Let's look at on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First off, great report. Thank you so much for that. I really love this. This is fantastic. Um, I had a question about the, uh, the municipal grants. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about uh, some of the projects that have been, that have been put forward, um, you know, how they benefited? I know we. I know the city of Newburgh might have put one in. I don't know if they 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 ended up being able to make the the cut in the last in the last couple months. But I think they I think they submitted it. Um, 
but just I'm just kind of curious yeah. how the projects, you know, like the like what they what they've been for, what they've done. Because I I've heard good things, so I want. Yeah. So so in general, uh, when the municipality does apply for this, and this is just municipalities, um, when they do apply, there has to be a certain mechanism for a marketing. So we want one we wanted as a committee to see um, that some of these funds are used towards extending their reach to get more people to come to visit Orange County. That's one of the requirements we had. Um, but to answer your question, largely that most of the events have been community events um, that they um, pushed out to other areas to bring more people into their community. Um, some examples would be Apple Fest or would be, oh, what maybe Apple Fest was the one? Was no. It? No, they just did program, you know. They're so, doing an art festival in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. um, but just the Monroe Food Truck Festival that just yep. happened, they got uh, used some of their funds towards that. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are for the um, the towns and villages uh, July 4th celebrations. Um, so a lot of them use that money towards whether it's fireworks and promoting the event, getting more visitors from out of the area to come in. Um, so, so largely that, and we have a full list if you're interested in seeing where the, um, what events, uh, do these funds go to, we'll gladly share with you. Wonderful. Anyone else? Very none. Thank you very much. Thank Wonderful you. presentation as always. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to look at uh, setting the public hearing for the 2023-2024 OC budget uh, for 8-3-23 at 3.15 p.m. Can I have a motion and a second? Mm -hmm. Second. I'm going to say All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I am going to let Legislator Skevich, uh chair for the next item, which is uh, item, the final item of the day. Okay, uh, next up we have uh, Alan Sorensen, Commissioner of Planning Department, through uh, Secret and applications for the inclusion of lands in the Orange County Agricultural District mm -hmm. number one. Sorensen, the floor is here. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Oh, you need a motion for a second. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, John and John. Uh, okay. Um, so as you know, each year there's an open enrollment period for inclusion of properties into uh, Orange County Agricultural District Number One. This year we received um, a total of ten applications for inclusion in the Ag District, uh, which is a much larger, higher number uh, than we typically receive. Typically, we'll receive three applications in the course of a year. So. Um, each of those uh, applications has been uh, reviewed uh, by the Ag and Farmland Protection Board. Uh, there have also been um, agricultural uh, enrollment forms that have been completed for each, along with uh, environmental assessment forms. Um, the Ag and Farmland Protection Board has uh, made a recommendation for properties for inclusion uh, into the Ag District. And um, I guess I would uh, stop there with, you know, were any questions on the, the recommendations or uh... Uh, questions, comments? Um, you might just want to talk about, uh, I know there's one um, uh, project in particular that was not recommended by Dan Ward that um, yes. had a speaker on at the public hearing. Want to comment on that yes. Um, so there is a property uh, in the village of Woodbury. Um, it is a, uh, just want to make sure I have the acreage in front of me. So this is a property, um, applicant was uh, Seth Fulver, uh, 14 Castleman Drive. Um, the subject site um, consists of 53.21 acres. Uh, they're currently operating a bed and breakfast uh, with a half acre garden. Uh, the applicant is uh, starting an event venue and the proposal is to expand to a farm winery. Um, there are the Ag and Farmland Protection Board uh, did go out and, and view the property. Uh, there is certainly potential uh, for, uh, for viable agricultural use there. The, the soils are conducive to that purpose. And 
there's been a lot of uh, work done at the site uh, so that in the future, if the applicant were to you know begin to um, grow the vines for the for the uh, winery, uh, the ancillary uh, facilities that would be needed to support that venture are pretty much in place. Um, they, you know they have they've made the other capital improvements uh, to support the future operation as a winery. Okay. So my question was just why was it removed then? It seems like it's uh oh it, it wasn't removed. Okay. Um, I was yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Misunderstood. Yeah, Carol was in the note. Okay, so um just to discuss this a little bit further. Uh, obviously, we all saw the property owner, Mr. Polker, come to our public hearing asking for um, some relief when it comes to something like this. Uh, we did receive a letter from the village mayor of Woodbury uh, opposing the application and forwarding law. However, the letter did not offer any substantial reasons as to why they were opposing this particular thing. And um, subsequently, I have letters from two of the councilmen in the town of Woodbury supporting the particular project moving it forward. Um, I, I think the applicant, and I think a lot of people I've spoken to, as well as a lot of people Mr. Culver spoke to, uh, is kind of caught in a catch-22. Um, the soils, by many experts, have been rendered that it's possible and it's good for this particular area and for this particular project known as a, a farm winery. Um, it is a term I wasn't familiar with, but it is something that to, to definitely enhance the community. And he's kind of caught in between two municipalities. Um, so. After the public hearing, I went to our legal counsel, Betsy Abraham, and I queried as to, uh, because I wasn't that familiar with the process, but I did speak to legislator Riskevich, who is obviously a lot more familiar than I, since he sits on the Ag Board. Uh, and is it possible, what, what are the options for the Orange County Legislature when it comes to something like this? Uh, these are recommendations. So the eight properties that you have before you are all being recommended by the Ag Board. They have done their due diligence. They have moved forward and gone to see the properties, and they're prepared to say that they would include this in the Ag District. Um, for various different reasons, I think they backed off of Mr. Pulver's property at this point in time. Um, they said he could come back and apply for another year. But we all know that when you're waiting on something like this, this starts to cost you money and it becomes very, and that's becoming very burdensome. This is becoming a hardship. So when I asked legislative council to review all of this, and evidently this has been done in the past, I don't know when, but these are recommendations. We can add to that list of the two other applicants that came, the Culver property, the other property, uh, which would be the 10th application, that and Mr. Sorensen, correct me if I'm wrong, that's being used for machine storage. So there's no indication that anything having to do with agriculture is going on there whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But given the fact that Mr. Pulver came, he spoke very eloquently about his situation. Um, I am prepared to ask you to please include that in this particular list. Mm -hmm. uh, it is something that the legislature definitely is empowered to do. And I, I think the comfort level that I have coming to you is this particular property is caught between the town and the village. And I think people are interpreting the law a little bit differently and he can't move forward. So while he has planted the grapes and started that, he can't do any more until he actually gets into the Ag District. The law states that all of these things are recommendations. And the ultimate decision is made by the commissioner of Ag and Market. That is an opening. I feel that it would be more than appropriate to move this, put this on our list, move it to the commissioner of Ag, 
and take the politics or whatever the other discrepancies are having to do with this and have it have a fair hearing looking at including it in our app district. So I would ask for yeah, consideration just, when it comes to that. Yeah, just have a few comments. Um, yeah, I do sit on the egg work and um, I was not on the, the site visit for that particular property, but I was on site visit for the other property that was not recommended. And um, that was, we had a pretty good discussion with the landowner and explained to him that whatever he wanted to do that would not be affected either way by being in or out of the ag district. So he has no issue with not being recommended. Um, this property, on the other hand, he has not planted any grapes yet, which I think was um, uh, the concern of the ag board is the current agriculture uh, being done there. Uh, to be included in the ag district, there doesn't have to be agriculture there, but it has to be a site that is suitable for sustaining an agricultural operation, which this one does. Um, so it's, you know, I think if we recommend it, the commissioner, commissioner's going to have no problem approving it. Um, the other issue, um, I think that the ag board has looked at is particularly um, with the eight year review that was recently done where they removed a lot of projects. Uh, one thing that the Ag markets likes to see with ag districts is that the majority of the land in the ag district is actual um, producing uh, agricultural operations. So, which is, yeah. um, this one is not yet, but it does have the potential. It looks like Mr. Bober is proceeding down that path and will be uh, in the future. So, I, I would have certainly have no problem adding this to the uh, list of projects. And uh, let's affect you. Know, Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Acting Chairman. And you answered my question, so uh, I appreciate that. You know, one of the things that uh, every year, and I've worked with Commissioner Sorensen on this in the last couple of years, is um, especially when we had the add and the uh, subtraction. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, we always want to encourage to keep our lands green and also encourage people to take advantage of the countryside. We live in Orange County and to develop more farming areas. And so that being said, I'll echo what uh, Acting Chairman said there. If you're going to make that motion, I'll make that second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Um, any discussion questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Legislator, you want to get? Okay. So, um, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to yeah, vote, on the vote on the original motion to approve, to, um, mm -hmm. approve the rest of them. So, is there a second? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And that uh, clears our agenda. So look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. We're done. Thank you, everyone. Everybody.